Hello, my name is Dominic Underhall House and welcome to another episode of Moonbreaker. So in the last few episodes we've been trying a few different lists. We asked for you know, some of your opinions, which hopefully we're going to be coming through by the time that this video is out, and I can have a look at some of that feedback. So in the rosters we've done Head and Rush, Astra Fury, Combo, Stalling the Game, and Melee Movement and Hard Hits. So one of the things I wanted to do was try something a little bit different, and what I want to do is look at building lists around one specific crew member, not a captain, a crew member. So the thing with these lists is they have to function on their own, you know, they have to be able to still cope if we don't draw that one crew member or things like that, but we need to be focused around playing that one thing the best we can. So I think one of the most fun units that we don't get to use because it's not the most powerful so far is our little friend Tipu. So Tipu is a 3-7, so 3 attack, 7 health, monstrous looking chicken brain demon thing, which is horrific in every single way, something straight out of Stranger Things crossed with a fever dream. But whenever it hits, it permanently gains plus 1 attack and plus 1 health. Now one of the things I want to test out, it says whenever it hits, not whenever it attacks, whenever it hits. So what we can do with this is we can build a list with Tipu. We can build a list using, if we go sort it for Syndicost. We can add in our drum dancer Tali and give it pummel. So pummel in theory, each time it hits, should increase the attack by one as well and increase the health, which could be more impressive. And then a series of things like snarling. We're going to have uh, oh my god, crankbait, other things to bring it across to Tipu. Now, obviously, the downside of Tipu is it's only one unit, so we need to protect that unit. So what we want to do is we're going to bring in things like. In fact, let's just start building the roster, and we can show you on the way through. So, we're going to call this one Tipu Smash. So, the first thing is, who do we want to use here? So, we've got two options for me, in my opinion. We've either got Astra, who is going to do a really good job of basically getting things down earlier, bringing down the support quicker, and potentially using Into the Breach to get Tipu to you know, have that little burst to get in there a little bit quicker. We've got Zax Jakar, who's going to be able to use the gravity well to bring things towards him and knock back things we don't want near Tipu. I'm going to start with Astra, I think, because what I want to be able to do is use the Into the Breach to just run Tipu in really quickly. So the first thing we do is put Tipu in our squad. The next thing we do is going to put in the things that we think are going to really benefit Tipu and start making things, you know, fall in that route. So we're back in alphabetical, we want Cindercost. So we're going to start with Drum Dancer Tali, because that's the synergy I want to test out. Then we're going to go with da -da -da -da, wherever Crankbait has gone. In fact, maybe Alphabetical is better for this, because I get to remember where things are. So things like Tona Mystic Manteo, not as good here, not as useful. Uh, so Connect Divine, fine, but it doesn't move. So the fact that it's immobile is very difficult to use. So at that point, that's why we want to use Stitchy Patchy. So Stitch from Patchy's in for this as well. Then we also have Savria Safeguard, reducing damage to zero on that unit for the next time. And then again, my favourite unit, I feel bad using this in every video, I do want to try some without. I'm going to go Torian Guardian as well. So the question is here, what else works with Tipu and what can we do? So one of the things I want to try out, which I think could be really powerful, is bringing Quetzali back in. So Quetzali is going to be refreshing the movement of a unit five times per turn. So we can run Tipu in, attack, and run back out again. So that's absolutely something we want to look at doing. And then things like maybe Jailbreak to sort of hold people in place, Snarling. So Snarling is going to be one that we are picking up as well. So let's just do that now. And in terms of actually protecting Tipu as well, so this may seem a little over the top, especially given that we're going to be moving around, but I don't hate the idea of bringing in... Where, I've forgotten the name now... Doo -doo -doo. Aegis, there we go. Aegis Defense Dome. So, reducing damage by one every single time. And for the last one, so here we probably need to bring in something synergistic. So, we've already got Snarling in there, we need something just to sort of keep us getting in range. I don't mind Peacemaker Balam to stun all crew in an area for a turn. So, I believe that stunts himself. But that's cool. I didn't know if it was all crew in the playtest. Maybe that's new. 
I think it might be Makwani Thicket. Makwani Thicket, Matipu, bring something in, take it to one life, kill it with Tipu, grow it up. And this looks absolute nonsense. So the thing we need to do here first is look at Tipu, so it's like a sort of pinky, orangey, reddy, bluey colour. And we are going to reflect that as best we can in our banner. First of all, Cholek, because that's what uh, race he is. Now Tipu is... Which of these? I think this, for some reason, makes me think most of Tipu out of these. And then Pattern, there's nothing here that's quite absurd enough. I think like that would be the one we'd be choosing for, or maybe one of these, the Cholek one. But I think for now, let's go with this. It's like our, our run towards it. And then let's pick some Tipu colours. So we'll go for the... Let's go for sort of the orangey colour first. So let's go like... It's kind of a lightish yellowish orange, so maybe we're actually a bit further up than that. Maybe something like that, and then go for a purple on here. These aren't really going to be the best... Oh, I'm no good with colour. So, for anyone that yeah, is wondering, I am also colourblind. Uh, it's close enough for me. Tipu smash. So yeah, colourblind is probably not going to help here. But, we want to have some fun and try something different. So we're going to try lists built around each... Well, not each unit, but a lot of different units here. So, Tipu smash, PvP. Let's see how we big we can get our Tipu to be. I think this could be a lot of fun. So... The concerns I've got is Tipu just getting one shot, Tipu getting immobilized, Tipu getting stunned. We have got Astra to alleviate that slightly. And also, most of all, just not drawing Tipu. That would be pretty tragic. So we're going to be looking for movement-based ones here. Oh. Ooh, they've got a nice paint job on there. Okay, so we've got Snarling, the Quarty Thicket, and the Defense Dome. Oh my goodness, this is interesting. So, escape hatch could be good here, as could medical recall. I think this is what we want for this. We could be going plink and disruptor beam, which is more traditionally good, but I think this could be fun. There's a sort of whirring noise going on in my uh, headset. I'm hoping that's just going to disappear once the game starts, but one of the reasons I wanted to take this is because if we've got the option of then putting things like Makwani Thicket on the battlefield for cheap, I'm absolutely going to do so. Okay, so we're going first. That's a really... I swear there was a way to look at someone's model. I'd really love to re remember what that is. Because that looks really cool and I'd love to have a little look at that. I love the grayscale look. So, we're going to start by boosting Don't worry. The tree gave us these. I introduced Aegis Defense Dome, okay. And then, honestly, I think we're just staying back here. We're not in much. We haven't even drawn our TP. Seven units for each of you, so. Still curious as to who this guy is. So I'm sure he's going to show up at some point because it was something that distinctive. Like last. I still can't quite see this. This will be over real quick. Oh, the guy is that. Oh, it's just Maximus. Oh, it's a zero cost Maximus. Yeah, it's not the way I choose to. This is good. So boost my um, I'm glad it brought the defense dome down because we didn't want it to be the uh, any of the other options. So we can get like a mild angle over there, like minus 25. But it puts us at risk. So let's just stay here. Make it hard for Maxus to hit us as much as it is for us to hit him. Okay, so what are they doing? Unsurprisingly, they're moving up. So next turn, we actually get to play Makwani Thicket and Aegis Defense Dome. I think what we want to do is actually play the Defense Dome first and then bring down Makwani Thicket because that might actually end up being a cheaper thing to do. As in, like it might reduce that damage as well. We could also just go Snarling, who is a legitimately good choice, but we're here for science. We're not here for, you know, reasonable choices. Let's let's try this. I hope it brings it down in range and we see if it does actually reduce the range reduce the damage by one. It does! Oh that's excellent. So we can actually into the breach if we want. Or with two, in fact, we can boost morale 
place snailing as well and this is going to really start adding up in terms of the pressure that we can put down so we need to keep Makwani thicket safe uh, maybe this positioning didn't work out the best with the defense stone being here probably blocking this but it does move so this is something I saw that's quite amusing as I watched uh, day 9 streaming and he didn't move the defense stone once I think he just worked on the assumption that it wasn't going to do anything. Oh, has that just kept us in range? It's So Snarling can be hit, but nothing else. And this could miss. Oh, they got the hit. So if they hide over there, that's fine. But Snarling can start trying to do something here. So this is where we need to start reinforcing. So we're going to have enough cinders to do so. But also, we're going to get closer and closer to be able to do this. Here, I actually think we're going to be snailing to immobilize Astra. Oh no, this is awful news. Oh, and it reduces damage by one. Uh, how does poison work? After damaging a crew. I mean, that was interesting. Funnily enough, <laughs> I'm going to <laughs> try my best. Uh, do you know what? We can medical recall this. This is really good for us. Oops, so we'll put that over there. Snarling can come over there as well. And we've blocked ourselves in again. Can't quite trap prey. We could play the defense zone, or we can just Get boost some morale Get some revenge. and play it for free, but somewhere slightly hidden. There we go. So now that's much harder for them to hit. And we can reinforce for next turn as well. Torian Guardian, excellent. We're still looking for Tipu. Not drawn it yet, but we can just... Ooh, I mean, I'm glad we had the defense zone there. That was a... Uh, a pretty brutal one. I mean, two damage is a lot less impactful than, than it could have been. So that's at least a plus there. What's the range of trap rate? It's pretty big. Broken vengeance here. Any crew that damages broken. I was hoping that would miss. I think we're in a lot of trouble here. It might be, though, that we can actually... <laughs> Move Makwani Thicket into range here to potentially trap prey. So if that goes to there, trap prey is there. I don't think we're quite going to be able to. So I think Torian Guardian actually needs to be our solution here. Okay, so we're going to bring this over here. Trap prey. Give it a smack. We both lose one. Give minuses to hit. But we're going to pop over here. Use our range attack. Snarling will take the range over here. And then hide away. Come on, Snarling. There we go. And then from the bridge, we're actually going to play Torian Guardian. Let's go here. Because Snarling they can get if they want to. Whereas this might actually keep Makwani Thicket alive. It's unlikely. Oh, they got the Vortex. No. That is brutal. Yep. I don't think there was anything I could have done about that. I couldn't have protected Unless I placed it here. But then they could still put it whichever way they wanted. Well, this is going to be probably a dead snailing. Yep. This is all going wrong. Oh, no. Yep, this is going horrendously. I still want to get a better look at their Astra. I'm loving the sort of the grey scale. And they've got their Torium Guardian now. And they're making really good use of the haste more than we are. Significantly more. Attacking. Again, there's not even anyone here that we can make better use out of it with. 
I think this has been a, an abject failure so far. We'll see if we can get a reinforce that's worthwhile next turn. Because if we can get Tipu, that would be great. We've got Drum Dancer Tlali. So we can actually just deploy both of these and still into the breach. But the problem is I don't know who we even try to deal with. My skin, green Makita bomb. So what if we tried I think we try and deal with Torian Guardian. So a range attack here. Of course it fails. We'll escape hatch a little bit further back. You got it. That taught me to share. Do we even need to enter the breach here? Uh, this doesn't work. Because of where it came down, that's pretty awkward. Let's play Tlali down here. Every Ooh, beat here. Strikes this spot. And honestly, just get sad and pass the turn. But I don't know what else we can rig do here. We, we haven't drawn some food. This is what's causing us issues. Torian Guardian has been amazing in every game for or against us. So Astra can now kill Crankbait, make it reinforce, yep. Steal that flag. Frog flag. There we go, it's our first real angle of it. I like that. I think, I personally prefer the frog more than the character. But, I mean that can't hardly be uh, an issue. I mean look at mine. Look at that beautiful thing. I love it. Oh, they've done theirs as well. I prefer mine personally, but I like both. Yep, keep killing me. I'll be honest, I think this might be a concession if we don't uh, get a really good turn next turn. Because the thing is, with the Torian Guardian, you don't even have a guarantee of killing it in melee. Okay. We'll give it one more turn. This might be a concession just to try and get a Tipu game out. So, reinforce. Let's have a safeguard. I think we call it a day there, because this isn't going to get us where we want to. They've got the Vortex next turn. We can recall something, but... Huh. Both ends are pointing. I mean, let's just... I mean, let's see what happens. Give Battle Frenzy here. So this might be able to kill... their Torian Guardian. Come on. Fight. Um, I'm not trying to target a friendly unit. There you go. Okay, we did miss it. Got the hit there. Can we get this one? Okay, we do. So we do reinforce. It's quite zarly. Okay, we are destined to never draw our uh, our Tipu. So, sadly, we're safe. Uh, we can just Look come down. We'll have the this is not how we hoped. So, the vortex is harder to use because we're all pumped, pulled together. But again, I don't see a way in which they can't pull Torian Guardian away because they can just pull these forwards. And honestly, if I were them, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be pulling my commander or Captain Astra away from Torian Guardian, or well, Torian Guardian away from Astra, and I would just be rolling all the damage in there. But myself. I suppose it is more consistent to just take down my other units as well. Oh, Tipu, where were you? Yeah, get the Vortex. I think the interesting thing about Torian is that you get the buff even when you're not in range of anyone else. Yep. Last turn to see if we can make something happen. Unfortunately, we also can't use our Into the Breach twice, so it would have been good to get Tali down last turn, maybe. Reinforce. Stitch with Patchy. Okay, we'll call it a day there. They've got their Orbital Strike back. We will concede this game. It's our first concession. We'll try again. Alright, jump straight back in. Tipu Smash, let's go. Now, there is every chance that we end up playing this uh, playing this game a few times and not ending up with a single Tipu game. We don't want that to be the case. Astra Astra, yep, what a surprise. 
Stitch McVatchy. There we go, TP. So, what do we want here? I think Plink and Orbital Strike sounds great. Or Cinder Infusion and Lifeline. Let's do Cinder Infusion and Lifeline. Because this way we can protect Tipu as much as possible. So, one of the things we've got a choice of here is Tipu is, I believe, a 3 drop, or if it's a 4 drop, then we need to change our plan. If Tipu is a. Th I think it's 4 actually. So, if it's 4, what we're going to do is we're going to use Boost Morale turn 1 and hope to hit Tipu. If it's 3, yeah, it's 4. Okay. So, we're going to Boost Morale, hopefully hit Tipu. We didn't hit Crankbait. So, next turn we can do both. Uh, oh wow, we're actually in range. Wasn't expecting that. I thought we would be better hidden there. So we're going to be able to play Crankbait next turn and then use Cinder Infusion again. Oh, sorry, Cinder Infusion Boost Morale again. One win, one bug. See, this is interesting to me, is that they're playing... I'm not sure if I like Maximus in these decks anymore. So I think I'm actually going to move up to still be behind here. I'm going to play Crankbait right the opposite side of this. The then I'm going to boost morale, and I did get Stitching with Patchy, so... Stick me Stitching with Patchy is going to hide in this corner here. Stop. And that's Can everything we can do. Which does mean that next turn we're playing Tipu, which is good, we've got three mana, we can play it straight away, and then we can start looking at you know, bringing things together. We don't want Stitching with Patchy to die, but I don't think that's even possible. So yeah, I think we're bringing Tipu down, and then going to hopefully use Crankbait the following turn to bring Tipu some lovely food. Oh, hitting both is frustrating. So, I imagine here they boost morale. Time to Should we greet someone? Is there a hello? Greetings. That's either hi or go away. Alright, leave him alone. Leave they just keep on poking my Stitching McPatch. I mean, that's the only thing they can hit. I would probably do the same. Now, what they do here is going to be interesting, because if they can play another character... Okay, they can't. Okay, so... <laughs> my dad would I think... Not so we can get two, so we can play... So if we boost morale... We can play Tipu about here... Cinder Infusion. Okay. We'll give Into the Breach to Tipu. We and we'll send Tipu on his first attack. I Excellent. Uh, we will also just send other things over here to join the party. And Stitch McBatchy is going to hide. Uh, we can actually heal Stitch McBatchy, so let's just do that. And Astra can't do anything here. So, Tipu's already growing. We're going to get our Tipu game. Come on. I don't see them killing Tipu this turn. And I think Tipu's probably going to grow to the point that they can't actually do anything about it. Don't make me so they got Arya and Detonia. Okay. This is all fine. Uh, he's trapped, so if he hits Tipu, he gets hit back. Yes, please, forget that. Forget that ruling. Hit Tipu and get hit back. I mean, they didn't forget. Swift as a sexy so, because they haven't done enough damage here, like, this is only two, this is only two, this is only one, I think we actually just get to Tipu kill one, grow again, or even maybe Crankbait kill one and Tipu hit over here. Yeah, Tipu can hit over here, we can start hitting their Aria, maybe even trap her in the corner. Oh, Tipu's going to get big. Yeah, this is fine. You can pet first. Hopefully they can't play anything anymore and that's the end of their turn. And if so, we are in such a good spot. Okay, they got Stowaid. That's fine. Oh, this is going to be good. So, Crankbait's coming over here to kill one of these. Tipu is going to come over here and get a big old melee attack over here. Stitchy McPatchy, I mean, it can't even heal it because it's not even taking any damage. So I guess we're moving over here, reinforcing, boosting morale to make our Quetzali cheaper. And 
poking over here for one damage, which means that next turn, if we need to, we can actually still Astra for one damage, and that will give us a... Uh, what's it called? What's the word I'm looking for? Give us a Reinforce for free. Here we go. So Tipu's up to five attack. This is brilliant. I might play another... Yeah, a couple of games of this in another video, because this is really enjoyable so far. Never fear. Okay, so here's the thing. They've got that there. Oh, has that got armor? No. Did they just... They just into the breached it. Okay. We've got five, six, seven, eight damage. We can just kill this. And gain some health. That's absolutely the plan. Like, we... We do have to rely on a little bit of range. Actually, no, wait. Can Crankbait even get in range? No, Crankbait can't. Oh, not crankbait, um, stitchy, but we could actually crankbait into range. Oh, this is interesting. So we've basically got to choose. Oh, that's a mistake. We're growing again. <laughs> okay, this makes it even easier. Yep. And then Tatonia can't even do anything here. Oh, this is a good. This is a good list. I'm loving this. So, I think here that we most likely want to kill Florio Lancer. So let's just move to here. We'll stay behind Florio Lancer. So we can get the melee in here. Grow Tipu again. Come over here so we can grappling chain Florio over here. We'll fight here. We'll see if we can get... There we go, the free reinforce as well. Got Quetzali and Snarling. Oh, this is this game's over. Yep, yeah, there we go. Snarling got up to seven attack. That's exactly what we wanted to do. I'm really, really happy that worked. So, in that game, we just got to basically put Snarling up, uh, Snarling, Tipu, out in the right place at the right time and just get a little bit extra. Ooh, Astra level up. Nice. But yeah, so we basically got to bring Tipu, Tipu out there and just each time keep him relatively safe. There wasn't anything there that was threatening enough to kill him, so, and if there was, there was Stitching Apache to follow it up. I honestly think that's almost as good of a uh, of an option as it could have been. So we're nearly moving up on this banner. We've got Tipu getting a little bit further on his XP. I've really enjoyed that. So the thing I want to check before we uh, go any further is do we think there's anything that we should be looking at to change this for next turn? So this is our Tipu one. Let's have a look at the edits here. So, Makwani Thicket is very difficult for it to, it's very difficult to use. It's very slow, but the main advantage of it is that if you get to sort of a late game situation, you pull the Makwani Thicket, you kill it with Tipu, you're getting two lots of value. You're killing a unit per turn, but also you're getting Tipu to grow as well. So that's kind of why I want that synergy in there. Quetzali is really useful. Torian Guardian's really useful, Snarling. The Defense Dome seems a bit mediocre, but I suppose it'd be good in matchups where you've got melee attack, melee attackers. Um, you know what, I'm okay with this. I think this is one, but if we were to change out the Defense Dome, what would it be? So, we've got Peacemaker Balance, that's the stun all crew in range. Not sure that's what we want to be looking at. Neck Divine is a little bit difficult to use. Toxoid could basically fill a similar role to uh, Makwani Thicket as well, so we could have two things running in, poisoning them and Tipu finishing off. And then with that, because they're both melee, that would be really good with like a Stim Burst or something along those lines. Um, there's... Jailbreakers... I keep... I've got a few crutches in this game so far, so I have a few things I use all the time. Jailbreak is one of them. I'm going to try and avoid Jailbreak this time. Necker Hall, return an ally to the bridge and fully restore it, is really potentially good for late game Tipu, especially if we can then reduce the cost with Astro, give it charge, or give it into the breach and move on. So this might be something we consider for future versions of it as well. And then, other than that, nothing here really screams Tipu to me. There was the thought of Amplifier Bite, so this basically takes Tipu just to having an extra attack early on, but I think because the whole aim is to get Tipu to continually gain attack over and over again, I don't think that's necessarily going to be worth it. So, as it stands for now, we've got a couple of options that we might look at changing the Defense Dome for next time we play. We might just keep it the same as it is, 
I've had a lot of fun playing this list. Tipu has absolutely been the MVP. And uh, that was a brilliant game where we got him to do exactly what he wanted. So one win, one loss. Pretty happy with that. All in all, just a lot of fun. So as always, I want to thank you all for watching. Please make sure you like, subscribe, hit all those buttons. It really does make my day and brightens up a little bit. And other than that, have a good day.